not only necessary, but we will hear from Shamil yes, or everything yes. else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And let me, where do I turn the screen to him now? Ooh, is there? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm a cameraman. Is there something I've never... <laughs> Okay, guys, and there's Shamir. And if I go wider, that's their house. Yeah. And it's what area is this, Shamir? It's uh, Eklund, Glimo, Glimo, Eklund. Okay. Facing north, higher. Yeah. <laughs> I'm learning. So Wembley Roadhouse and Belgravia Road is just a road away. And we're on the corner of Thornton and Densworth. As you know, Thornton is well known for uh, the Trojan horse incident that took place uh, in the 80s. Just wanted to check. Are you hearing us? Yes, Hi, we can hear you. Erica? Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. And then on your left, what is on your left? Uh, on your left is uh, Athlone Industry. Also, the um, I mean, it's more residential areas. We trust young smuts. The Athlone police station is on the corner there, and of course, the little shopping area and the train station is, is that side. And oh. further up is the uh, Ranabas East, and further to the north, to the east, to the east is um, um, Rylands and Gates. Yeah, and Google it on that side. No, thanks, thanks, Shamil. Okay, and then a little bit background about the space we're going to be touring. Yes, so good morning, everybody. My name is uh, Shamil Adams. I help a little bit in sales and marketing for a small social entrepreneurial initi initiative and a young uh, social entrepreneurial initiative called uh, Cape Urban Farmer. It was established by Siraj uh, Musa, who is on his way. And it was started uh, during lockdown, at the beginning of lockdown, in response to sort of what are we going to do in terms of survival, our own families, and started out essentially with microgreens. He has a passion for growing, which came from his mother. I have a passion for growing, which came from my father, although I made a lot of fun of him when he was young, but I had no idea, no interest in what he was doing, but the passion he, uh, started up again. And so Cape Urban Farmer, we do three things, basically. Uh, we focus on urban urbanites, those that are in the city, with the idea of conscientizing them about the environment, about food sovereignty, I can never get that word right. <laughs> and also about um, just being a little bit more aware that we have the capacity, we have the history, we have the roots to disconnect from the system and help ourselves and start growing food ourselves so that we can, when we meet another situation like lockdown and economic crisis and all of that, we can work together more closely. Okay. Okay, so I'll just take you through uh, the house um, um, this way. Uh, we'll walk our way just quickly through the house. I'll show you some of our uh, of, of what we do. We do three things. We sell firewood. As you know, urbanites, they think they're very sophisticated technologically and otherwise, but fire is the one thing in relation to nature that they've never gotten away from. Whether you're young, whether you're old, whether you what class, a fire is something that people, in terms of nature, still relate to. So we sell firewood, that's one. And two, we do uh, seedlings and urban gardening supplies like potting soil, et cetera, et cetera. And three, we do urban foods. We try and use some of the stuff that we grow, which I'll show you uh, in our foods. We just do acne and we do cysts. Okay, mm -hmm. shall we go this way? You may not Uyani? Yes, yes, Erica. I was just wondering if you could also uh, orientate us, uh, where is north, which way the sun comes over in summer and winter, which yes. direction the wind and the rain, please. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I'll hand you over to our scientist over here <laughs> that can help us with the directions because I am directionally, uh, yeah, stunted. Yeah. Okay. So where he's standing, he is facing north. He's facing I'm north. Facing north. Yeah, which is more that way. More that way. Yeah, yes. and then point that way. That way. And that is their east. Our east. If I pan around, that's yes. their east. Yeah, so you, yeah. East. Yes. So if you point at your yes. at your back, is your south, yes. and that's your yes. west. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So you can tell the house is more uh, north. south. No, yeah, not south facing. Okay. And then and then most of your this season now, where is the wind coming from? Well, most there's two 
primary window yeah. into one to South Asia, and then when the rain comes, it comes sort of this way across, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, so that's what the north, I suppose, is, is where the rain comes from, or this way. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. And then you get these winds also coming yes. from, from the, uh, the south. Yes, yes. Okay. I mean, to be honest with you, I'm not very aware of that. Okay. I haven't really taken note, note of that. Of okay. Learning. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, that's going to be very critical going forward. Okay. Yeah, that you really observe because the one of the major principles of permaculture is to, first one is to observe. Yes. You yes. know, yes. you've yes. got to really observe what's happening just in, within this. Uh, micro environment, yes. you know, of yours, yes. Yeah. So you've got to understand exactly, you know, where's your winter sun, where's your summer sun, yes. because now you can tell already it's far away from yes. us. Yes. And then it, in, very, in your summer, you know, it's right above yes. you. So, and then your wind, yes. that's going to be very critical, Sorry, yeah, to observe. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. I hope that's helpful, uh, Erica. Or any other questions? Yes, before we move into the house, to the back. That's great, how thank big, you. How big is the house itself? Uh, at its best, I would think about 800 square feet. 800 square feet, okay, yeah. okay, okay. This seems to me like a sort of double, double cut. Okay. The, 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 houses, the houses in this area is about 450 square meters. 450 yeah. square meters, yeah. okay, okay. Okay, so we'll do a quick walkthrough. Um, uh, this is a sort of our sales area, but we'll come back to that. You can see there's some wood and what's left of our seedlings and some of our gardening area. Um, so this a, used to be a lawn, if you see, guys. Yeah. So now it's, it's instead of paving, we're seeing it's mulched. All of it yes. here is all mulched. Yeah, and also a lot of white sand. You know, which is quite prevalent in the in, in the, the area. This is where we have our which um our stuff file for for. Right here is where we do our micro greens. Be careful over the uh, it's woodland. This really so I'm very sure. No. I'm very sure. This is where we do our uh, micro greens. We're still busy uh, in the setting process up. setting up. Okay. You see some of it's overgrown. Mainly uh, Ramadan, Ramadan, we focus on Ramadan. So, um, it's a bit overgrown. Um, yeah. It also uses um, quite a bit of water. That was one of the things that I wanted to maybe get some advice on, you know. And your microgreens, are they for sale? Yeah, or? We, we, we have sort of tested some of it in the market. There is a, 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 some interest in it, but in our local communities, there's still a lot of education um, needed around the nutritious value of microgreens, mm -hmm. what it is and how it works and so on. And that it is in fact possible for, for you to do that at your own house. So uh, again, just uh, stop fine, and then we'll end up. Um, you'll see uh, over years where we have our only water tank, which is uh, coming from the from the roof. Of How big is your water tank? Um, I actually don't know. This looks like the thousand two hundred. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It looks yeah. Like... yeah. 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 Yeah, I apologize, I'm still learning. So yeah. this is a thousand two hundred liter water tank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no and that and look if you look at the house now, yes, and there's the main house roof and this 
extended area, yes. which is also a big roof on its own. Yes. And then there's this garage area, double garage, yes. which is another roof. And, this and there's even another roof at that end. So yes. you can tell already this one area, if I'm just looking at it, that roof will be about six meters long. I'm not sure how long you're wide. I'm not sure how long it is going that way. And then also this double garage looks like another six, seven meters long. And then the house with that, it's almost 13 meters. So we just need to get his. Yeah, that sounds to me like about 10 meters. Yeah. yeah. Just a uh, rough measure. So that would be graphic in by six. And then the on the one side uh, would probably be about measure. Are you going to measure? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And go through the gate. Yes, sir. Okay, guys, I'm just going to measure quickly. <laughs> um, so, Buyani? Yes. While we're waiting for them to measure, uh, yes. a, question, a question for them is, what do they plan on doing with their space? Where okay. do they want yeah, to set up good. gardens? Okay, you know, very good. Uh, Shami, that's the critical question, which we should have asked even in the beginning. What's your main area of, or your idea of harvesting all this water? Is it to be for a gardening section that you yeah. want to set up as a garden? Yes. Yeah, if you can explain quickly on that. Yeah, we were about to, to get that get to that yes um to answer your question primarily it is about uh gardening and water harvesting for the purposes of the garden if we could um and we seek advice on that of course um we'd like to be able to uh, supply for example the the, the toilet um of the house and 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 if we can the, the the shower um but yes first and foremost would be to try and get some water supply uh, through harvesting to the garden Okay, and where will be your garden in this, all this space? Okay, yeah, we were just about to get. Oh, um, we're planning to extend this also into the into the garden area. Okay. So, yeah, this, this yeah, uh, if we area, see Sukisa yeah. and Antio uh, yeah. Latifa, they are all in an area that's going to be also converted yes. into a garden. Yes, yes. yes. It Link looks like three means. meters wide, and it looks like six meters long. This yes. one portion. Yes. yes. So at the moment we're using grow boxes primarily, and this is the the sort of gardening area. Okay. Um, we're doing a lot of um, sort of uh, vegetables. Um, we've got purple strawberry, uh, chilies. Um, as you can see, our chili is very active. Size of that, it's very nice. And then we've got brinjals over here. Um, so when you we were speaking the other day, this is more as a demonstration to the yes. local community yes. that it, how small your space is, this is possible yes. that you can be using that space. Yes. Yes. I mean, the, the, the main idea um, behind what we do is to try and inspire our community um, to 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 understand that it's possible, it's feasible um, to be able to use the space that they have, whether it is just using pots, or whether they have grow boxes, or whether they have a little space in the back or in the front, um, that it is possible to start growing some of your own vegetables, your own plants, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I must tell you, um, since we've started, and we're only about eight months old now, we've had a massive response, uh, mainly from the elder community, middle age, and, and upwards. So it would seem that the notion of uh, gardening or urban gardening or home gardening or home growing is something that is very much alive. It's just something that hasn't come to the fore as much until lockdown. Okay. You know, for example, our potting soil in a week, we will be sold out. Yep. Our compost in a week will be sold out because our food supply is depleted, completely depleted. You know, because there is a keen, keen interest, as you know, um, nationally and globally uh, to try and see how we can um, uh, be, a, be a little bit more independent. Yeah. Yeah, I'm very proud of you. One more question. Yes. 
Um, how many hours of sun does this area get? Because I see it's quite in shade now in the morning sun. Yes. Um, um, it, 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 uh, it depends on, on, on where you're talking about it getting sun. Because yeah. the rooftop itself gets sun sort of 90% of the day. Starting, as I've now learned, on the east and moving across to the west as per normal. And then because we've got, obviously, a, um, the wall. All around here, um, there, is, there is quite a bit of shade in this little gardening area. But then again, on the front side, which we'll get to, which is where our wood is and one grow box and two little boxes, there is much more sun. But it looks like for me, Erica, that uh, at least about 11, the sun will be hitting this space. Yes. And then by sort of 2 p.m., the, the sun's gone again because yeah, of the shade like of the house. Yeah, so I think they're getting about only three hours of sun in yeah. this full sun in this area. I would agree that certainly on, on the eastern side, um, which is where we have a little garden now, um, this area of the garden, yes, by about 2 p.m., I would say, yes, the sun is in that side and it's primarily shaded here. So that would be but the same for the six meter extension behind us. Yes, it, it, yes. It would, yes, 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 for sure. Yeah. Okay, and Thank then you. let's move. Yes, but I want to show you my face. I didn't get it, my brangel. <laughs> my yeah, brangel, this brangel, my brangel. <laughs> my bro, check it, this brangel. I'm gonna make me brangel curry. You come and join me until I tip Yeah, so a, quite a healthy little um, salad. Three growing boxes, Good, yeah. spinach, etc., yeah. etc., et um, some parsley, etc. So here we are uh, again, sort of back to the front. Um, we've now sort of moved in a circle around the house from, from, from where we started, where we are now. Um, we do little worm farms, which I'm very proud of. Um, I've never fell in love with a little. Um, we do creatures uh, and we do single boxes. But yeah, uh, here's the last um, sort of grow area that we've got over here. It's primarily at the moment for display, as you can see, some vegetables, some succulents, uh, some flowers. And then we've got those one little small boxes on the floor there, one, two, three uh, small boxes on the floor. And the rest is just our wood display, our, our firewood display. But that's the, the extent of the of the little business. And um, yeah, I, I, I really look forward to, to seeing, if possible, for example, this seedling area here. Uh -huh. um, how does one set up a water harvesting system where I can irrigate this? Okay. So as I understand it, it either has to be pumped or the tank has to be high enough. For gravity. So that gravity can allow for We'll set up the pipes here and gravity can allow for pressure to take place that would allow for the for, for the sprinkling system to work. So I'm not sure in terms of where we set up, if we actually have a high enough roof to do that, or where do we set it up? Does it require a pump, etc. Et yeah. Okay. So you've had that question, and if you look at the roof height now, yeah, it's it's not that high at all. Yeah, if you look at where where the gutter is, I can almost touch. You, yeah, you can almost touch the gutter. Yeah, and that's the yeah. Maybe then that means the water will have to go straight into the tank if they had to set up a tank there. But now gravity, it looks like it won't really be possible here, especially in the front section. I don't know what's your take on that, guys. <clears throat> Um, I was busy thinking, you know, from a, from a business sense, uh, uh -huh. your your big money is going to be in vermicost. Aha. Uh -huh. um, so why don't you use that cold wall, the entire length of that cold wall, to set up uh, um, worm bin systems because the worms like to stay nice and cool, and then That's above it, instead of yeah. having a little roof set up raised wicking bed systems so you can run your water pipe across from your gutter 
into your wicking bed systems, let it run from one to the other all the way down the six meters. And mm. anything left over, you can put into a tank. Yes. Uh, sorry, am I speaking to Jill or Erica? Erica. Or oh, hi, Erica. Um, thank you for that. Um, so, so when you say vermicast in relation to business, that's an interesting statement because uh, who would you consider to be your primary market in that in that instance? I know we're talking about water, and I know we're talking about setting up a, a system that would supply the, the board, vermicast yeah. or the week what the weekly yeah. beds. Yeah, yeah, the, the beds. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's a very interesting thing to to consider. Thank you. We do have um, some vermicast um, and vermicompost that we that we sell actually. So there is a good link there. If you set up beds where your roof is by your head, um, right. that will then uh, no not other side um, yes. ah. on your shelving. If you set up wicking beds at that height, it would give you way more sun. So you'll be able to grow more oh, yeah. variety. Uh, and because your water is then running through a wicking bed system, it doesn't evaporate oh. all the way down the wall. Okay. So you are saying it's about getting to the to the sun. As well. As well, yes. As well as getting all your water yeah. in. Yeah. We have the same. Uh, so that here. would be your height of yes. the beds. Yes. Then getting all that sun, yes. all the plants. So know. the beds would go above the the viber grid. Not necessary. Okay. That could be the height. Yes. The highest point of it. Okay. If I'm getting you right, Erica, because yes, um, yeah, the height of the the fence is about one point seven, which is that's almost my height. One point yeah, one seven three. Yeah. So the idea is that. Whatever you, you've done there with the shelving, that shelf will be the stand to have your 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 bed, you are like your yes container type things. Oh, yes. Dogs and cats here. Yeah, sorry guys. So sorry, the cat is trapped and the dogs are hunting for it. Hey. Uh, okay, but whilst he's sorting out the cat and dogs. This Zugisa. So, what would you get in terms of the house? Yeah, the house is 13.3 long and 9.3 wide. You want to get inside? No, no, no. no. Outside, outside. Yeah, also open. Jump, jump, jump. Oh, jump. Isn't that nice? Uh, it's up, it's up, it's up. Go for it. No, don't worry. It's fine. So, another 13 meters. So the house was 13 meters, and this is another 13 meters. That's 26 by 9.7. Who's fast in calculator? Uh, 19.26 times 9.3. Yeah, another question you want to know, uh, I'm sure of uh, Shamil, is this formula now, what we're working on, I'm sure then, yeah, I'll introduce you to Jill. Yeah, just to help us here, Jill. So we've got 26 by 9.3 wide. Okay, that will give you your entire roof area that's available for catching rain. That's right. And then you multiply that by your average by average rainfall rain for the area. Yeah. Sorry about that, thanks. Oh. 
So what is that 26.3 .3 times your annual rainfall oh, measurement, oh, which is uh, probably 350 moles a year in your yeah. area. Yeah, you are 330 in our size. So yeah, it's more or less the same, I think. So you you've got the square meter. Okay. So, six times how many by, by 9.3 by 350. Yeah. Yeah. Give us uh, average annual rain that could potentially be captured here. Okay. Yes. What's that? 9,319,3. Some, uh, uh, there must be something wrong there. Is it? Um, so that would be first in nine twenty six by nine point three. Yes. You should be getting about eighty four thousand liters yeah. of your roof every year. Yeah. Times. Times. Yeah. Yeah, that's 84.6 thousand. Yeah. yeah. Have you got that, Shamil? <laughs> yes, I've got it. <laughs> how, how much water is that? 84,600 and odd liters per year. Yeah. Am I correct? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yep. But in the end, that's that, that that a lot. A lot of water. I would yeah. never even have imagined because this is an average roof. It's an average size house. It's nothing, no extensions. In fact, it's uh, more than likely the original. Um, frame that it was built on, you know, in the early 70s, whenever it was built. Yeah. 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 This way but or? now what we've realized yes. for now is that the, what, the possible usage of that water, or if you're catching some of that water, yes. what will be the possible usage? And you wanted to garden and therefore use some of that water for the garden, some of that water for your toilet yes. and, and shower. Okay. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. now there's an added uh, advice because there's this shaded area yes. in your space. Yes, I mean, up the ground boxes. The wicking boards, yeah, the wicking bed, box. yeah, yes. Added, yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. Fantastic, thank you. Yeah. Um, There's also a way of storing your water by running it through the wicking system so you don't need ah. as many tanks. Ah. Okay, that sounds fantastic, and and, and which means it's also self watering that bed. Yes, that that whole system, yeah. and and is it just a, a, um naturally flowing because of the height of the tanks, or or how does that work, or is it just water that's stagnant? When you say flowing, I'm not sure what that means. You're going to want to put it on a slight incline. The, ah, uh, okay. where your gutter comes down at the top of the house now you'd that would be your starting point to uh, have the water enter your wicking system and when you come right. down to your gate down here is going to be your lowest point okay okay yeah. now i understand the, the incline and the height yes the other question i've got for you is the roof behind you where you've got all your storage of wood can yes. you not grow your microgreens on top of that roof so it can be Never. supplied with water from the two roofs on either side? Uh, potentially, but um, as I understand it, one would need a floor area for that. Or, or, or in other words, you know, how do you manage that? If, if, if do you, do you, are you saying on top of the roof or are you saying another structure must be made on top of the roof? No, the moment, just on top of the roof. <laughs> Ah, just on top of the roof, and and in because microgreens, as as I understand it, and I have a limited understanding, is that it needs particular temperature, particular environment, particular setting, which is why it's indoors, and and all of those greens are quite carefully monitored, um, you know, in terms of temperature, the pH level of the water, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I do think that, that and, and again, you know, I'm, I'm learning, but, but I do think that it's a very, very interesting idea Two, I mean, one is, is the, the, the sister that's talking about the weak, weaking point. Weaking, that's yes, very, very yeah. interesting. Two, the idea that we need to get more access to the sun and at top of the roof is a very interesting potential growing area. 
that's that sounds very 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 um um so, so something that I that definitely want to ex explore. Hmm. Okay, are we still together? Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, oh, like another okay. question: the furthest roof. Uh, which yeah. angle does, is that? Another flat roof, or does it? Yeah, it's, go it's a flat to... roof. It's and then it's dropping on this one on the garage. Okay. Yeah, it's dropping to the garage. So all that water. So that's the only water that's being cached here now for yes, now. Yes, for this now. Small yeah. tank. Because I see a potential for at least setting up another three tanks along here and dividing up where you're catching the water from each roof separately. Yeah. 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 I mean, there's a downpipe there if, if you're talking about that. Uh, potential, it would come. Of this uh, middle roof, I would assume. Yeah. Um, there's a downpipe yeah. on the outside, um, on the outside front, uh, which I pointed out earlier on. I think we're talking about the height of the roof. So that's also an, an option. Um, and yeah, uh, 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 is, are those the three points you were thinking of? Yes. Yes. Yeah, even in that corner, there it's big enough to take a, a tank, and yeah, even two, even two, five thousand liter tanks. If he they want that's the biggest they can take. Otherwise, they can line up those uh, one thousand two hundred liter, uh, and then you can tell already in that space, three will fit in there. You know. I also just noticed for the first time ever. There's another gutter at the top here, which is for that roof on that side. Um, so this downpipe essentially is for the middle roof. Yeah, uh, so there's a stopper on that gutter, yeah. Yeah, there's a stopper, so you can release that stopper. Yes. And then that tank for this will be call yeah. It, yeah, collecting yeah. from that. So Tisha pointed that out. I didn't even notice it up until now. So that could also be a potential point, uh, certainly for um, this roof side um, to, to, to harvest a bit more water. Yes. Thank you, Tisa. Yo, Andy Latifa is not enjoying herself at all. Yeah. She... <laughs> she... Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Oh, Sugisa also has got a problem with dogs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. No, thanks, guys. So, quite a few options have come out. Yes. And yeah, it's a question of now having your rough sketch, maybe. Yes. yes, yes. And then we're looking at red, then really properly. Now you've got the big picture in terms of how volume of water that you yes. get get here yes. it's it's impossible that you can catch all that water yes but you can catch enough for what for the purposes yes. that you want to use the water for yes. you know so you now you've got the big amount that you can work from yes. with the not enough space to put the collecting uh, tanks yes. and then there's another option you must and I'm, i've seen you really taking that up in terms of the weekly pairs. Yes. And then, yeah, that's yeah. the, those are the areas that yes. maybe yes. you'll start working yeah. on in terms of really redesigning yeah. the, the water harvesting system here. Right. Yeah. My, my understanding is step one, observe. Uh, from a permaculture point of view, very important to understand your location, wind direction, uh, rainfall, uh, where it's coming from, what's influencing that, how much sun there is, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that is step one, as, 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 as I understand it. And then uh, step two, to, to, to understand what it is that, you, that you're aiming for in relation to water harvesting. Um, in my case, uh, it's just uh, at this point, um, the gardening as step one uh, or, or goal one. But if we can extend it, I'm, I'm looking to, to, to do some of the usage within the house. Um, 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 and also to, to expand a little bit further. Then we went through in terms of the, uh, the amount of space that we have here and the amount of, of water that can potentially be captured within the 900 square meter space. 
and the two structures. And I mean, that was a shock for me, but what, about 84,600 liters per year, which could be captured here, which as you say, possible to capture all, but more than enough to, uh, to meet the, the goals that I would like to. And I mean, thank you so much because I think the idea of uh, extending this, the, the water harvesting um, um, infrastructure, for example, that we can put more tanks in here, that would be fantastic. That we can do the wiki system, yeah, wiki system, system. Uh, the beds, because that uh, complements what it is that we aim to do. That's my that's my understanding. And then um, um, what I really am very keen on and quite interested in, and it excites me, is the idea of being able to use the top of that roof to grow a little bit more, um, and also to be aware uh, that access to the sun um, and that on top of the roof. I'm sure it'll get plenty of fun. So that was my understanding. Very, very useful. Thank you so much. Yeah. I've got one other suggestion. Yes. Yes. Um, underneath your wicking beds on the along the wall, it's the, a massive yeah. amount of space. I don't think you're going to fill it all with worm farms. What you can do is you can see if you can get hold of the old tanks that get pulled out of. Um, uh, um, the that was that that is... in, in Kukuletu, we use the square, no, square ones. Or, 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 yes, your know, square the tanks, yeah. the ones yeah. that get also get pulled out of uh, recreational vehicles. Uh, yeah. The yeah. old grey water tanks and that. Those are sort of horizontal square ones, and that would fit underneath the wicking beds and be yet another place where you can store water. And it would be oh. pretty safe because it's going to be kept really in the cool and out of the sun. So you, your yes. water yes. stays good for longer. Yeah, I'm now going to use all the measurements which I've come to learn about, and I'm going to do a little bit of a rough sketch, and then see uh, where what fits in, and also look at the idea, you know, whether it's worm farming or growing on top of the roof or extending the water harvesting points, um, so that I can. Uh, this is how my brain works. I need to kind of see a bit of a plan. Um, but yes, very, very exciting, very, very informative. Hmm. Yeah. No, thanks. Thanks very much, guys. Uh, oh, did we lose Jill, Erica? No, Jill's here. I don't know if anybody oh. else has got anything to add. Uh, yeah, Jill, no. if you have anything to add. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, that was wonderful. Really, very, very informative. Yes. And I want to, if I may, um, uh, Isa, Isa, Angela, Kupa, uh, Riyani, Jill, Erica, and uh, Cape Town together, uh, Food Growers Initiative on behalf of Cape Urban Farmer. Thank you so much for 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 your kind assistance. It certainly has allowed me to think broader, and most importantly, be a little bit more aware, and then observe and then put the plans that we've discussed into place. Thank you so much. Really, really appreciate it. And yeah, thanks, Erica, for organizing all this. Uh, thanks, Jill, for my meeting there. Uh, thanks, everyone, people. Great. Thank you very much. Does anybody yeah. else on the call have any questions or input? Yeah. No, dead silence. The rainwater that um that I was. Okay. That's a one thousand. <laughs> Oops. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Hi, Thanks. Thanks. Speaking. Yes. <laughs> Joe, we can't hear you.